हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय लेक्चर ऑन टेलर सीरीज सपोज एफ जेड इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एन इक्वल टू जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी सी एन जेड माइनस जेड नॉट टू दी पावर एन मॉड ऑफ जेड माइनस जेड नॉट लेस देन आर दैट मींस दी पावर सीरीज कन्वर्जेस इन दी रीजन मॉड ऑफ जेड माइनस जेड नॉट लेस देन आर नाउ वी नो दैट ए पावर सीरीज विद ए नॉन जीरो रेडियस ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस रिप्रेजेंट्स एन एनालिटिक फंक्शन विद इन इट्स सर्किल ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस so the question now the natural question is uh, if we are given an analytic function f uh, in some domain d then can be represented by a power series so our next theorem uh, answers this question this is called taylor's theorem let fz be analytic in a domain d and let z equal to z not be any point in d so let us consider any domain d okay and let us take a point z not in the domain d okay then fz can be uniquely represented by the power series fz equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity fn z not this is fn z not means nth derivative of fz at z equal to z not over n factorial into z minus z not to the power n now this representation of fz is valid in the largest open disk with center at z not contained in d that is the radius of uh, convergence uh, or the radius of this disk will be uh, the uh, distance of the point z not from the nearest point on the boundary of d uh, let c be a circle with center at z not and lying entirely within the domain d so let us consider circle with center at z not okay so let us consider a circle uh, say this circle is c Uh, with center at z not lying entirely within the domain d now we consider any point z belonging to c belonging to the interior of c okay so for any point z belonging to the interior of c by cauchy integral formula fz is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c fs ds over s minus z okay uh, any uh, the value of uh, the uh, A function f at any point interior to the uh, uh, the circle c can be found by cauchy integral formula and it is it is given by fz equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c fs over s minus z ds then fz can be expressed as uh, 1 over 2 pi i integral over c fs over s minus z not 1 over 1 minus z minus z not over s minus z not so 1 over s minus z okay i can write it as 1 over s minus z not uh, minus z minus z not okay then i can write it as 1 over s minus z not 1 minus z minus z not divided by s minus z not okay so Uh, f s over s minus z is written as f s over s minus z not into one over one minus z minus z not over s minus z not d s. Now we know that one plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n plus one over one minus q. Okay, uh, is equal to one over one minus q. we know that 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n minus 1 this is equal to 1 minus q to the power n upon uh, if you take here n up to n if you take 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n if you take then this there are n plus 1 terms so 1 minus q to the power n plus 1 upon 1 minus q so i can write it as 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n plus q to the power n plus 1 upon 1 minus q equal to 1 over 1 minus q so this is equal to q to the power n here okay so i so from this formula we are writing 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n plus q to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus q equal to 1 over 1 minus q using from this formula okay so one, this is q okay this is q so 1 over 1 minus q is equal to 1 plus q plus q square q to the power n and then q to the power uh, n plus 1 so q to the power n plus 1 means z minus z not over s minus z not to the power 
n plus 1 ok and then 1 minus q ok. So, q to the power n over 1 minus q. So, we have q to the power n plus 1 upon 1 minus q means uh, z minus z naught uh, over uh, s minus z naught raised to the power n plus 1 and 1 over 1 minus q. q is equal to z minus z naught upon s minus z naught. So, uh, what it, it is? z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 uh, s mi into s minus z naught divided by e uh, s minus z naught to the power n plus 1 ok s minus z naught to the power n plus 1 into s minus z into s minus z. So, this s minus z naught will cancel with 1 s minus z naught here and we will get z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 uh, in upon uh, s minus z into s minus z naught to the power n ok. So, this is this term ok. This term is q to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q, q to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q where q is equal to uh, uh, z minus z naught over s minus z naught ok. So, this is how we have written this uh, this equation. Now, uh, when you put this value ok, by value of 1 over 1 minus z minus z naught over s minus z naught using this equation, this equation gives us f z equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f s over s minus z naught this this term corresponds to this one ok. Then z minus z naught over 2 pi i z minus z naught over 2 pi i integral over c f s over s minus z naught whole square d s then z minus z naught whole square by 2 pi i integral over c f s d s over s minus z naught to the power 3 and so on. Now, the term corresponding to this. So, z minus z naught to the power n by 2 pi i integral over c f s d s over s minus z naught to the power n plus 1 and then the last term z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 by 2 pi i integral over c f s over s minus z s minus z naught to the power n plus 1 d s ok. Now, uh, using Cauchy integral formula for derivatives we have the Cauchy integral formula let us recall that f n z naught is equal to n factorial divided by 2 pi i integral over c f s d s over s minus z naught to the power n plus 1 where n takes values 1, 2, 3 and so on ok and f z naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f s d s over s minus z naught ok. So, using those for the those formulas ok uh, the first term ok first term this one is f z naught this is f prime z naught over 1 factorial this is f double prime z naught over 2 factorial this is f n z naught over n factorial ok. So, we can write this equation as uh, f z equal to f z naught plus f prime z naught over 1 factorial z minus z naught f double prime z naught over 2 factorial z minus z naught square then nth derivative of f z at z naught over n factorial z minus z naught to the power n plus r n z r n z is the remainder uh, of the series after uh, these n plus 1 terms. So, r n z is z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 this this expression this expression is r n z. So, uh, this is z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f s d s over s minus z into s minus z naught to the power n plus 1. Now, this equation this equation is called the Taylor's formula with remainder r n z ok. Now, we shall show that this r n z the remainder of the series after n plus 1 terms goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Since now we are given that f z is analytic in the domain d. So, since f is analytic in the domain d uh, and the uh, the circle c lies uh, within d ok. So, f z is analytic on c and therefore, mod of f z 
assumes its maximum value let us take that maximum value to be m on the contour c ok. So, mod of fz uh, say m is equal to maximum value of mod of fz where z belongs to c ok. So, furthermore z is inside c ok you can see z is inside c. So, mod of z minus z naught is less than r ok uh, this z is inside c and the radius of c is r ok. So, mod of z minus z naught is less than r ok r is the radius of the circle. So, uh, in addition since z is inside c mod of z minus z naught is less than r and so mod of s minus z must be greater than or equal to r minus d. Now, let us see how we get, get this s minus z is equal to s minus z naught uh, minus z minus z naught ok. So, mod of s minus z is equal to mod of this which is greater than or equal to mod of s minus z naught minus mod of z minus z naught ok. So, uh, d is uh, d is your mod of z minus z naught ok and mod of s minus z naught mod of s minus z naught is equal to r because s varies along the cir circle c ok this s is the variable of integration ok and the integration is uh, 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 along the curve c ok. So, and the radius of uh, the circle is uh, r. So, mod of s minus z naught z naught is the center of the circle. So, mod of s minus z naught is equal to r. So, this is r minus d ok d is the distance of z from the center z naught. Now, uh, so mod of r and z ok mod of r and z let us find mod of r and z is equal to mod of z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 divided by 2 pi and then mod of integral over c f s d s divided by s minus z into s minus z naught raised to the power n plus 1 ok. Yes. So, uh, let us see uh, integrand mod of f s over s minus z into s minus z naught to the power n plus 1. This is less than or equal to mod of f s is less than or equal to m because m is the maximum value of mod of f z along the curve c and mod of s minus z is greater than or equal to r minus d. So, this is less than or equal to m by r minus d and mod of s minus z naught is equal to r. So, r to the power n plus 1 ok. So, this integrand is less than or equal to m by r minus d into r to the power n plus 1 and the length of the curve c is equal to 2 pi r. So, this is equal less than or equal to mod of z minus z naught mod of z minus z naught is d ok. So, d to the power n plus 1 over 2 pi into 2 pi r which is the length of the circle c ok into m divided by r minus d into r to the power n plus 1 ok. So, this cancels with this and what we get is m into r. So, this is m into r divided by r minus d ok then d by r to the power n plus 1. Now, d is less than r ok d is the distance between z and z naught ok z lies to the interior of c ok and z naught is the center of c. Uh, so, definitely r is bigger than uh, mod of z minus z naught ok that is uh, d is less than r and so d by r is less than 1 and therefore d by r to the power n plus 1 goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and we thus conclude that mod of r and z goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and hence r and z goes to 0 as n goes to infinity for all z which lie inside c. Now, by let us apply the identity theorem of the power series. So, by the identity theorem of the power series the representation of f z in the form 2 ok. 
in this form ok in the form 2 is unique in the sense that 2 is the only power series with center at z0 which represent the given function fz. Since fz is analytic in D the, rad the radius r will be at least as large as the distance of z0 from the nearest point on the boundary of D. We can increase the radius of this circle C as long as uh, I mean uh, we do not cross the boundary of D ok. That means this r can be can at most be the distance of z0 from the nearest point on the boundary of D. If we take it to be more than that uh, more than the distance of z0 from the if we cross the boundary of D then the series may no longer represent fz at all points of D which lie in the interior of the circle of convergence. Every analytic function has derivatives of all order. We know that every analytic function we have seen uh, by the Cauchy integral formula for higher order derivatives that every analytic function has derivatives of all orders and now we have seen that it can be represented by a power series of the form 2 ok, power series of the form 2. Now this is not true in general for real functions. For example, if you consider f x equal to e to the power minus 1 by x square when x is not 0 and f 0 equal to 0 then we can see that f dash 0, f equal to 0, f double dash 0 equal to 0 and so on, f n 0 equal to 0 for all n ok. So, f f x equal to e to power minus 1 by x square when x is not 0 and f 0 equal to 0 has derivatives of all orders at x equal to 0, but it cannot be represented by the power series about x equal to 0. If you write the power series about x equal to 0 what it will be? Power series about x equal to 0 will be uh, is uh, f 0 plus x times f dash 0 x square by 2 factorial f double dash 0 and so on ok. Now, we know that here f 0 is equal to 0, f dash 0 equal to 0, f double dash 0 equal to 0. So, power series becomes 0 ok. So, it definitely not does not represent f x equal to e to the power minus 1 by e x square. So, this function cannot be represented by a power series about x equal to 0. So, uh, uh, this result holds in the case of complex analytic functions only. Now, every power series with a non-zero radius of convergence. Now, if, if you have any uh, power series whose radius of convergence is non-zero, then it is the Taylor series uh, of the function represented by that power series. Let the let us prove this. So, let the power series sigma n equal to 0 to infinity c n z minus z naught to the power n have a non-zero radius of convergence say given by r. Then it represents some analytic function we know. Uh, say it, let us take that analytic function to be fz and uh, say the region of convergence is mod of z minus z naught less than r then fz is equal to sigma n equal, CN, n equal to 0 to infinity c n z minus z naught to the power n. Now, we can uh, uh, term by term uh, differentiate this series. So, f prime z is equal to c 1 plus 2 c 2 z minus z naught and so on and more generally nth derivative of fz is n factorial into c n plus n plus 1 factorial into c n plus 1 into z minus z naught and so on. Now, all these series converge ok and have the same radius of convergence r that means they all converge in the region mod of z minus z naught less than r and represent analytic functions. Hence, these functions are continuous at z equal to z naught and therefore, f z naught is equal to c naught ok, f z naught will be equal to c naught, f prime z naught will be equal to c 1 and f n z naught will be equal to n factorial into c n ok or we can say c naught is equal to f z naught c 1 equal to f prime z naught over 1 factorial c n equal to f n z naught over n factorial and thus we get f z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity f n z naught over n factorial z minus z naught to the power n which is the Taylor series of the function f z ok. So, so this proves the theorem uh, that is any power series with a non-zero radius of convergence is the Taylor series of that function, uh, Taylor series of the function represented by that power series. Okay, now let us consider the function f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z. Okay. So, here 
1 over 1 minus z we can see uh, this function is analytic for all z except z equal to 1. Let us find its Taylor series expansion about z equal to 0. So, okay, so that means uh, we f 0 we have to find f 0 equal to 1 and if you find f prime z, f prime z is equal to minus 1 upon 1 minus z whole square into minus 1. So, 1 upon 1 minus z whole square, okay. f double prime z let us find it is uh, minus 2 1 minus z to the power minus 3 into minus 1. So, 2 upon 1 minus z whole cube. If you find f triple prime z, it will come out to be 2 into 3 uh, 1 minus z to the power minus 4. So, this means 3 factorial divided by 1 minus z to the power 4. Okay. In general, so this can be written as 2 factorial divided by 1 minus z to the power 3 and here it can be written as 1 factorial divided by 1 minus z whole square. In general, f n z okay, is equal to n factorial divided by 1 minus z to the power n plus 1. So, this is valid for n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay. Now, this implies that f n 0 is equal to uh, n factorial okay, uh, n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Right. So, now, so the uh, Taylor series with center at z equal to 0 is given by sigma n equal to 0 to infinity f n 0 by n factorial z to the power n which is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity f n 0 is n factorial. So, n factorial divided by n factorial z to the power n. We get summation n equal to 0 to infinity z to the power n. Okay. So, the Taylor series uh, of the function f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity z to the power n and we know that this series converges in the region mod of z less than 1 okay? and the sum of the series is 1 over 1 minus z. So, 1 over 1 minus z is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity z to the power n. Now, we can see that if you take z equal to 1, okay? if we take z equal to 1, then uh, z equal to 1 is a singularity of the function f z. A singular, a function, uh, singularity of the function means the function ceases to be analytic at z equal to 1 or f z is not analytic at z equal to 1. So, f z is singular at z equal to 1 and z equal to 1 lies on the circle of convergence here. This is your this is mod z equal to 1 okay, and z equal to 1 lies here. Okay. So, the series converges for all z which lie to the interior of mod z equal to 1. So, uh, 1 over 1 minus z is equal to sigma this is. So, sigma n equal to 0 to infinity z to the power n is the Maclaurin series of 1 over 1 minus z and the region of convergence is mod z less than 1. Now, if you take the series 1 over 1 plus z, okay, suppose let us let consider now f z equal to 1 over 1 plus z. Then the uh, Taylor series for this function f z can be found from the Taylor series of uh, f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z. How we can do that? This can be written as 1 over 1 minus minus z. Okay. So, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus zeta, where zeta is equal to minus z. Okay. Now, uh, the series one of the function 1 over 1 minus zeta. Okay. In the zeta plane, uh, this is sigma n equal to 0 to infinity, this is zeta to the power n, okay, where mod of zeta is less than 1. Okay. Uh, the, in the zeta plane, now 
in the zeta plane 1 over 1 minus zeta equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity zeta to the power n where mod of zeta is less than 1. So, uh, using the transformation zeta equal to minus z now ok then uh, 1 over 1 plus z is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity uh, mod of minus z to the power n and mod of zeta is equal to mod of minus z less than 1 ok. So, I can so I can say that this is summation n equal to 0 to infinity minus z to the power n uh, mod of z less than 1. So, this is also equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n z to the power n mod of z less than 1. So, 1 over 1 plus z ok this is the Maclaurin series expansion of 1 over 1 plus z can be found out uh, from the Taylor series expansion of the function f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z by making use of the transformation zeta equal to minus z. Now, if you take one more function say f z equal to 1 over 1 plus z square ok 1 over 1 plus z square ok then here also uh, let us take uh, zeta to be equal to z square ok. Let us take zeta to be equal to z square then f z is equal to 1 over 1 plus zeta ok which is equal to by making use of this expression ok. This is sigma uh, n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n zeta to the power n where mod of zeta is less than 1. We have just now seen 1 over 1 plus z can be written as sigma n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n z to the power n uh, mod of z less than 1. So, using this we can write 1 over 1 plus zeta equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n zeta to the power n mod of zeta less than 1. Now, let us use zeta equal to z square. So, we shall write sigma n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n and z square to the power n and then mod of z square mod of z square less than 1 ok or we can say uh, f z equal to 1 over 1 plus z square is given by sigma n equal to 0 to infinity uh, minus 1 to the power n uh, z to the power 2 n ok and mod of z less than 1 because mod of z square less than 1 means mod of z square equal to mod of z into mod of z less than 1 which implies that mod of z square is less than 1 and which implies mod of z is less than 1 ok. So, the uh, Maclaurin series expansion of 1 over 1 plus z square can also be found uh, without uh, uh, determining the values of the derivatives of f z at z equal to 0. We can make use of the uh, Maclaurin series expansion of 1 over 1 plus z for this purpose and use the uh, transformation zeta equal to z square. So, when we want to find the Taylor series expansion of a given function, we use alternate methods to determine the uh, Taylor series expansion of the function of z. Uh, usually, we do not have to find the uh, de derivatives of f z at z equal to uh, 0. Uh, we can make use of the uh, uh, Taylor series for the function 1 over 1 minus z in the region mod of z less than 1 or 1 over 1 plus z in the region mod of z less than 1 and uh, the given function is then uh, 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 broken into uh, uh, various terms by using the partial fractions and then we use the uh, known uh, Taylor series expansions for the function f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z and 1 over 1 plus z. So, with that we uh, uh, we, we can find the Taylor series expansion of a given function without uh, determining the derivatives of the function at various points because that is uh, there are infinitely many terms. So, we can only find the derivatives for a finite number of terms, but by using uh, the uh, expansions of 1 over 1 minus z and 1 over 1 plus z we can write the uh, uh, entire series uh, Taylor series for the given function. So, in the next lecture we shall uh, discuss uh, uh, LoRa series and uh, in the case of LoRa series because here in the case of the function uh, 
uh, Taylor series the function fz is assumed to be analytic in the neighborhood of the point uh, z naught in some neighborhood of the point z naught, but in practically in, in applications we always do not have this uh, situation we have to uh, expand the function around those points where the function is not analytic. So, in that uh, in those cases we make use of the LoRa series. So, that we will discuss in our next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.